whether it was a sporting occasion or whether it was some entertainment. Often it's confusing. There's not enough information available, either before, during, or after. And actually the journey starts before, not during, before, during, and after. Sometimes it's expensive and the ways of buying tickets aren't as easy as you might like. Not everybody can travel to the venue to buy the ticket. Some might buy, and increasingly they are, buy online. But buying the tickets for the journey and tickets for the event could be combined. So starting to think about what combinational arrangements are necessary may involve an internet experience but might also involve a mobile experience. If the running order has changed and you're en route, what do you do? If there's an incident at an event, who do you tell? Who are you going to alert? You need a database in advance to know who's going into the stadium so you can alert people. It may not be everybody in the stadium is alerted. It may only be row X or row Z. But being able to alert people if the running order has changed or the timing order has changed or, dare I say, a security incident is very important. So every event, in our view, begins and ends with a journey. And we look at some of the things that we support, so in terms of transport for London, supporting some of the iBus technology that was mentioned briefly by the earlier speaker, maybe supporting some of the travel alert information to do with uh, railways, certainly some of our experience at the O2 at Greenwich, which is now the most visited entertainment venue in the world. You should see some of that to actually learn how they are thinking about a venue from a customer experience point of view. But everything that drives us is, dri is customer driven and that experience is absolutely key. So think about the journey from before, during and after and what information services would make life easier for the fan as well as for the employee. One of the areas we're seeing emerging, as was referred to briefly in the video, is near field communications or NFC. This is not in every handset today, but we can see more interest in this area. And we did a trial last year with Transport for London, Visa, uh, and other partners. And this is about starting to move towards contactless payments. It started to help you with travel, access to information, such as the uh, example of Bluetooth pairing on a display there. Maybe even get, getting better access to rooms or uh, facilities. On the bottom right-hand side, you can see reference to Cafe Nero, and they did a, a brand to promote the Tutankhamun exhibition that took place at the O2. So we're able to combine various services and information solutions around a mobile and internet combination with NFC. Gifts and loyalty cards are probably the next challenge, but I think a great opportunity when it comes to getting loyal customers, not just ticketed customers. In our NFC trial last year, we had about 500 trialists in, in the London area, and I think it really positioned uh, London as really a centre of innovative thinking in this area. Otherwise, O2, with all its partners, would not have got some of the headlines as shown on the Evening Standard or in the Times or the Financial Times. But I think it's a credit to all our partners that we made it really work well. It was the largest consumer trial of NFC in Europe, but actually it's shown up uh, many times in other presentations, how well it worked in terms of the ecosystem, bringing together partners from different backgrounds, but also partnerships with banks and retailers and other players who can help develop this innovation. The, the, the feedback I'll go on to in a minute, but the feedback was absolutely fantastic from the press and the media. So three key headlines just to leave you with there. 89% of all trialists, all 500, were interested in taking this up now. Not three years' time, not five years' time, but now. 67% said it was more convenient than just using a separate Oyster card from a phone. In other words, we combine the Oyster card inside the phone for Oyster card functionality, and 67% said it was more convenient than forgetting one or the other. And the third thing they said was 87% of the availability of Oyster or, or equivalent systems would influence their decision to purchase a mobile phone. Now, we can't, as O2, supply them all. We'd like to, but we can't. We do acknowledge there are other networks out there. However, we've found ways of collaborating with our competitors to try and deliver things like this. But it still depends on the transport authority.